It's Saturday morning, it's 10 a.m. It's pillow talk Durham time. If you're still in bed, get your ass out of bed, get your pens and papers ready, and let us jump in. I'm a board certified dermatologist based in New York City. My name is Shireen Idris. If you have not subscribed to this channel, feel free to subscribe, like this video, and let me know what you wanna learn about next. Today's video was voted on by all of you guys through my broadcast channel on Instagram, and it was a whopping, I don't even know how many thousands of you who voted for favorite drugstore skincare. So without further ado, we are gonna do a lineup of drugstore favorites through various different categories. This list is not exhaustive, but it is extensive. And there are some old and some new in this list. But before I jump in, you don't need to spend a million dollars on quality skincare. You absolutely do not. If you want a $400 cream because it's a nice to have and you can afford it and you enjoy it, you do you, enjoy that. But can you get the skin of your dreams through drugstore skincare products if you know what you are trying to target and you understand your skin and your problems? My answer is yes. You probably can. You just have to be pickier and you have to know what you're trying to achieve through each product. Also, I had my makeup done today by a professional makeup artist. So if you like this look, let me know. It's for an upcoming shoot. Starting with cleansers. For all of the OG nerds here, you know what I'm gonna mention. I do not have it on me though, but Vanna Cream Gentle Facial Cleanser is a great one for people with very sensitive skin. It is basically free of everything, so you're not going to get irritated by this cleanser. The negatives are it's not the best at removing makeup, so you're gonna need something else to remove the makeup first. It can be a little bit irritating around the eyes. Uh, I have very, very sensitive eyes, and I do not attempt to play peekaboo with this cleanser while I'm washing my face because my eyes get burnt in the process but it's an easy one it's a great one for everyday use and it is basically one that is not going to irritate your skin if you have a lot of allergies now if you are somebody who's looking for a little bit more because you also have dry skin and you're eczema prone then Avino's Common Restore Nourishing Nourishing Oat Cleanser is a great one to add to your routine it is a beautiful jelly chewy cleanser that is loaded in Avina Sativa oat kernel flour which is very calming and soothing it has glycerin it also has ha i don't mind it here because you're going to wash it off and you don't really let this one sit fully on your face but it is a gel cleanser that is good for dry skin and eczema prone skin that is going to help to restore your skin barrier it is however not great at removing makeup either which is why i'm excited about the next one which is by waleda skin food nourishing oil to milk cleanser i personally am not a huge fan of oil cleansers but I do like this one because it looks like a thicker ointment when you rub it in it doesn't have a very oily residue to it it is made up of sunflower seed oil as well as viola tricolor tricolor extract and chamomile flower extract it has no HA in it and the second you put water I have some water here it gets converted and I'm just gonna do this twice to show you guys into a milky sort of cleanser. You guys can see that it basically transforms into a milkier cleanser that does not feel very oily on your skin. And that is the thing I hate the most about oil-based cleansers is that oily residue of a feeling of a film on my skin that just I, I don't do well with. But this is a great one if you are looking to break up your makeup that rhymed, um, and you don't like the oily feel of an oil-based cleanser on your face, and it retails for 20 bucks. It can also be used as a nourishing face mask. Sunflower seed oil is not only great at retaining moisture, it is also anti-inflammatory, so maybe you can put it on your face before lathering it up with the water, allowing it to sit for a few minutes and then washing it off. Now, if you are looking for an active cleanser to sit on your face as a full-on mask and you have acne or you have oil-prone skin, Panoxyl is a benzoyl peroxide cleanser. It retails for 10 bucks. It is great for people who have a lot of blackheads, who are really acne-prone, who are oily. Because benzoyl peroxide does help to regulate oil production and it is also acting as an antibacterial agent as well, it is one that I would recommend using, but allowing it to sit on your face before you wash it off. If you just use it 
to kind of splish splash and wash it off, you're washing money down the drain. After cleansers, we have our serums. And when people think about serums, they think about vitamin C. And this is one that you nerds actually introduced me to. It is the Timeless Skincare line that is usually found at drugstores. You're gonna have your 20% vitamin C and your 10% vitamin C. I would have made the 10% light yellow and the darker one the 20% and I always get them confused because the darker one is the less aggressive one. This is ascorbic acid, it is the active form of vitamin C. It is also combined with ferulic acid and vitamin E, which is the classic combination that you think of when you think of SkinCeuticals, CE Ferulic. It is also a very clear lightweight serum that smells like hot dogs, um, similarly to the CE Ferulic line, but I love that it comes in an opaque pump and not a silly dropper. So it is definitely winning when it comes to packaging and when it comes to the bang for your buck in that sense, because it only retails for $27. Now, ascorbic acid is not for everyone. It can be very irritating. It is hard to formulate. It is not one that lasts. So even this, even though it is in an opaque pump, you probably do want to use it up relatively, I don't want to say the word quickly, but in a time sensitive fashion. Whereas ester forms of vitamin C are not necessarily needed to be used up that fast. So an interesting one that we have here, this just came out. It is their Future Renew Damage Reversal Serum that has been launched as of late. It is made up of ascorboglucoside, which is one of the ester forms of vitamin C, as well as niacinamide, which acts as an anti-acne barrier repair sort of situation. I have a whole video on niacinamide, you guys can watch below, as well as tocopherol acetate, which is a version of vitamin E. It is a thicker serum, as you guys can tell over here, that does blend in nice, and the benefits of this is to help not only brighten and improve sun damage but to act as an antioxidant as well in your skincare routine it is extremely lightweight in nature and very fast absorbing so you're not going to feel like something is sitting on your face whereas sometimes with timeless and ascorbic acid you can feel that tackiness of the vitamin c sitting on your face this one retails for 30 bucks Cetaphil is a brand that is highly popular among dermatologists. Again, I have never been sponsored by these people at all. They have a new serum known as the Healthy Renew Purified Peptide Face Serum for 30 bucks approximately. The reason I am including this in this roundup is because I like that they are um, basically directing you for a retinol alternative. A lot of people cannot tolerate retinols and therefore feel that they are missing out and they try to get retinols into their skincare routine and they end up with a really inflamed skin barrier. So I like that they're trying to point people in another direction, which is not necessarily a retinol direction. It is made up of highly purified peptides. And this is where I personally do have questions, I'm not gonna lie. What are these purified peptides? How do they get them? Which one specifically are we talking about? Because nowhere on the packaging or the website do they actually talk about the type of peptides that they are using and what this purified peptide actually means. They say that it, the purified form of the peptides is much more specific. Great, but which peptides are we talking about? All I know is that they're derived from soy extracts and they're not actual peptides in the classic way that we think of peptides. But it's still nonetheless an interesting serum. It also has niacinamide and it has panthenol, which is vitamin B5. I have a whole video on that as well, as well as a budget anti-aging video if you're looking for more extensive roundups. But it is a nice moisturizing serum. These capsules break up once you put the serum through, so you're not going to get the capsules into your actual hand or face when you put it through. It is very, very lightweight. It feels like light like water. It feels like a hydrating serum if I'm being very frank. The beauty of this is that it supposedly does offer those benefits and a brand as big as Cetaphil cannot falsely promise that. So hopefully I'm gonna learn more in the upcoming few months about it. It is interesting for people with sensitive skin. If you're looking to just lay it underneath your other serum and moisturizer and sunscreen, it is a hydrating serum as well. And if you're unable to tolerate retinols, it is one that is worth looking into because pourquoi pas, let's see what happens with it. It's not gonna break the bank and it is promising that. Plus it is glycerin based. 
Um, there is no HA that I see of over here on the ingredient list. And I say knock yourself out and give it a try. I also say try it for your neck and your chest because these areas are notorious for not being able to tolerate a retinol. Which leads me to ELF. ELF has their Youth Boosting Advanced Night Retinoid Serum, which is a mix of Grand Active Retinoid, also known as Hydroxypinacolone Retinoate, which is what you find in Caroline Hyren's Retinoid, as well as 0.06% Retinal and other antioxidants. It's a mix of various different types of retinols on the market. It has a very, very light scent to it, but nothing crazy or repulsive. It is a great for people who are beginners who want to actually grow beyond peptides into the retinol world, but cannot fully tolerate stronger retinol or even a prescription. An active retinoid and hydroxypinacolone retinoate tend to be gentler on the skin while supposedly delivering as effective results or close to effective results as an active form, which is the prescription. Not put it on your neck on chest and chest first and start low and go slow, maybe two or three times a week at most and work your way up from there. Which then leads me to moisturizers because you can use a retinol underneath the moisturizer, but if you're sensitive, use it after the moisturizer. Now going into winter and the air getting as dry as it's getting, I like things that are chewy. I like things that are going to grasp my face. There is obviously hydrating serums like Avino's Common Restore hydrating serum that I love, but these are thicker, richer moisturizers. I'm going to start off with La Roche-Posay's Cicaplast Boom B5. It has panthenol, shea butter, medecasoside, copper, as well as zinc gluconate, not zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is better when it comes to fully restoring a barrier, but this one is great for hydration and locking it in. It is white. I use this as a magnolia cupcake icing situation all over my face. And the same way that I baste my lips, I do not want to ruin my makeup right now, I baste my face. My face looks like this when I apply it at night. And I don't care because I'm not going to see anyone. And then I go to sleep. I let it melt into my skin. I probably put it on half an hour to an hour before I go to bed. I scare my husband. If my kids are up, I scare my kids. And then it just kind of melts and does its thing. And the next day my skin is like glowy. It's also a nice one if you are feeling slightly inflamed. I do wish the zinc was slightly different to have more of a anti-inflammatory effect and more of a restorative effect. But nonetheless, it works pretty damn well. And it really is a very nice overnight mask situation. So that is the La Roche-Posay, the Cicaplast B5, and this is how I actually use it. I use it like a rich, rich icing for my face. Eucerin has their Q10 anti-wrinkle face cream and I love this one for winter because it is rich. It is rich. It is yummy. It looks like butter in a restaurant. I'm about to put this on a piece of toast and eat it. No scent. It has Q10, coenzyme Q10, which is also known as ubiquinone. Um, ubiquinone coenzyme Q10 is a very, very strong antioxidant. Everybody thinks of vitamin C when they think of an antioxidant, but this is an antioxidant cream, which is really good at helping renew your cellular energy. Coenzyme Q10 is used within our cells for cellular energy so that cells can stay energetic, plumper, more alive, longer. So it does help in the long run with the texture of your skin and coenzyme Q10 does help protect with photo aging. So it's a great cream to incorporate into your routine. You can use it at night, but you can actually use it twice a day underneath your sunscreen even, even though it is very thick. If you're in a very dry area like Utah, go for it. Skin will thank you. Which leads me to now, more occlusive things. Everyone's gonna talk about Vaseline. I've spoken about Vaseline. I actually prefer Vaseline to Aquaphor because Vaseline is pure petroleum jelly, whereas Aquaphor has lanolin, and some people just do not tolerate lanolin well. But Aquaphor wins when it comes to the body because they have an ointment body spray, which I am obsessed with. It is a ointment that you can literally spray on your skin without getting that crazy greasiness of an ointment that you're using on your skin and it just gets dispersed more evenly. At night, if it's very dry, 
and you're gonna wash your hair the next morning, psh, you can put it on your face. You can maybe spray it on your hands first and then apply it to your face if you don't wanna ruin your hair, but you can actually use this to lock in the rest on your face. And I will argue that it is actually much more elegant than quote unquote slugging with just Vaseline, which not many people can tolerate. Um, but it's great for covering more areas. It is great for the body as well. I do this after the shower for my body to lock in the hydration. I will just tell you guys, make sure a towel is on the floor so you don't slip and slide uh, because that has happened to me. Luckily, nothing got broken in the process. But that is Aquaphor's ointment body spray. And last, Verst has a retinol body lotion. They do not disclose the percent of their pure retinol in here. I'm assuming it's on the lower end of the spectrum, but why not help fortify the skin of our body the same way we're working on our face? I hope this video was helpful. I have a lot more products that I really love from the drugstore. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know. We can do other roundups as well. But I wanted to touch on classics and I wanted to bring your eyes and your world into newer products as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about it and what you want to learn about next week. If you think I should shorten these, let me know as well. I can keep on going for hours and hours and hours. With that being said, I hope you guys have a beautiful Saturday. I'll see you guys next week.